Hello, and welcome to this download from Blackwell Online. My name is George Miller, and my guest is Jan Zalashevich, author of The Earth After Us. In the book, Jan looks back and forward several billions of years in the life of our planet to show the dramatic effect we are having on it, and to ponder what traces we will have left behind a hundred million years from now. I asked Jan first to explain the premise of his book. The premise is is to apply to humans, you know, to to our own species, exactly the same kind of of analyses of processes of, of thought experiments, uh, which we apply as geologists routinely to to dinosaurs and to ammonites and trilobites uh, and every other species that has existed on the world. All of those have a history that we can read. Parts of that history are obscure, parts of it we know very well. And so we develop a set of methodologies, uh, a means for making predictions. And then it was simply a case of, of looking at us, looking at what we produce, in, in particular, you know, the, the, the strange uh, Baroque constructions that, that we've made all over the world, and then just treating those as, as future fossils. So you posit an alien race which comes to Earth in a hundred million years, and they've they've obviously got the technology, the science to get them to Earth. Therefore, they're scientifically scientifically curious, and Earth is the the subject of their investigation. Yes, I, I think if if you have a race, uh, a civilization of of beings who are sufficiently curious to get to this solar system, one can imagine that they will be sufficiently curious to a look on the world as extraordinary because the world the earth is is extraordinary by comparison with all the other planets and then to investigate its future present as it were and also try to work out to wonder where this future present has come from how it arose uh, and how it survived for so long and to do that they will have to play the particular kind of history game that that we call geology here they will have to uh, look at all the evidence on the Earth, which is abundant, far more abundant than on any other of our neighbouring planets, and then try and put on the deerstalker hat and, and the cape and become, you know, a, a fossil detective. And in a way, it's a kind of homage to the human enterprise of geology because you're showing how much science is involved for this alien race to come and get to grips with the the material evidence. And I suppose in a sense, you're sort of saying, well, this, th these are the processes through which human geologists have gone in order to bring our understanding of the, the Earth and its functions to the present state. Yes, precisely that, because we, we often take, uh, like, you know, the Earth for granted. You know, it is what we are used to, and yet it is extraordinary. And then we have these picture postcard views of the past, of, of tableau with you know, with dinosaurs and with armoured fossil fish and, and, and such. And yet the Earth of the past, looked at in any way dispassionately, is deeply alien uh, and becomes more alien as we go further back into the past. We now have a reasonable idea, a set of more or less uh, logical glimpses of, of what went on there. And then I suspect in a hundred million years' time, if there are beings, whether from this planet or from another planet, who look back in the past, they will also look on this particular time as being also extraordinary. And certainly what humans have produced on the Earth is quite a unique footprint. There has been nothing like us before and nothing like the kind of effect that we're having on the planet. Situate for listeners the, the human occupancy of the planet within the swathe of geological time because that in itself is quite sobering, I think. The Earth is a little over four and a half billion, that is four and a half thousand million years old. Life has been around for more than half of that time, it has existed since about three billion years ago. Most of the history of life is a history of microbes. They are the real rulers of the planet, they have the longevity, and they have the influence even now to affect the planet more than we have. Creepy crawlies, multicellular animals, metazoans, have been around for about half a billion years. That is one-ninth of the history of the planet. And they came on the scene with a bit of a bang, um, and that is still a mystery. So they've been around for about 550 million years. Uh, humans have been around for 160,000 years. That is a small fraction of one million years, and one million years is the small change 
of geological time. Within that 160,000 years, humans have only made any sort of impact globally for about 10,000 years since the end of the last ice age. And really, we've only begin, begun to really affect the planet drastically, one might say, over the last 200 years. Uh, so we are an accelerating phenomenon. When you pull the camera back to that extent, you don't have to be a pessimist to think that in 100 million years from now, the likelihood of us still being around is not high. It's simply a matter of the, the geology of the planet changing. We have altered the rules of the game a bit, but even so, our chances must be much, much less than evens. The average species span is somewhere between one and five billion years. We've been around for much, much less than that. If we make it to the average species span, then I think that will be a huge success, you know, for the human species, because as well as making, adapting the Earth to make life more comfortable for us, we're also adapting the Earth to long term make life much more dangerous for us. And although we are ingenious, we are more robust than many other life forms, nonetheless, one would not rate our chances at surviving into the geological future. So even if, our, even if from tomorrow our effect became miraculously benign, the planet is changing under our feet, literally, in ways which we will not be able to control, with the, the, the shifting of continents and with that changes to, to ice and, and weather and habitability. Yes, yes, there are always the, the shocks that come from outer space, the, the meteorites, the, the supervolcanoes. Uh, we've never really lived in any kind of historical memory through a very, very big volcanic eruption. Uh, and yet one of the kind that we see in the geological past could take out a whole continent, for instance. And then the, the other dangers as well. The more we know about life, the, the more, again, the microbes have the upper hand. Uh, so uh, things like pandemics are part of the natural world, as part of the human world. So given all of that, plus our own propensities, you know, for intra-species argument and warfare. Yes, it's going to be a, a bumpy ride ahead, I think. So these aliens in 100 million years arrive and the planet, the surface of the planet has been wiped clean of human vestiges. So how do they know we have been here? It will take them some time, just in the same way as it took humans quite some time to discover that there had been such things as dinosaurs, you know, on, on the Earth. The Earth surface is far too active, it's far too energetic. The, the forces of erosion are far too great for anything on the surface to be left. So we are looking at a, a record in the strata. We will form one thin stratum amongst many millions of strata, kilometre thicknesses of strata, you know, which cover the Earth. So it will be only when the aliens start to read the story in those strata that they will first try and work out in broad scale the history of of the Earth and of life on Earth, just as, as we are at the moment, and then focus on extraordinary events within that, just as we focus, let's say, now have come to focus uh, on the, the events that wiped out the dinosaurs and, and much else about 65 million years ago. And the first evidence they will find of that will probably be of mass extinctions, environmental change, sea level change, ocean acidification, all the environmental processes that are, we are causing uh, and which will leave an imprint. And then it's only by tracking that thin layer around the world, again, just as geologists do today, that they will eventually stumble upon, rather than actively look for, the remains of parts of towns or cities, uh, roads, houses, obvious artefacts, you know, unnatural constructions, as it were. And then they will know that there had been a, a past civilization on the planet, but it will take some time.